Welcome back. We're going to do 1st Nephi chapter 6. Um, this is Nephi. Um, I love the short little chapters in the Book of Mormon and Doctrine and Covenants and all these. I, I love the little chapters because I feel like it's a little more intimate. It's a little bit more face-to-face -face for me. Versus the big chapters where they're trying to tell me the big story, the big picture. This is just like, hey, i got to get this little bit of information to you and this is the only way I know how to do it. So that's exactly what I feel like is happening in the first Nephi chapter 6. It's Nephi kind of like pulling us aside and even the future writers aside and saying, hey, I'm not going to worry about the stuff that's going on right now. Like my dad, the genealogy of my parents and me, um, what I'm writing is just the things of God, the things that the Spirit's telling me to write. And I'm not going to make the world happy with what I write, but I don't care. That's not what my purpose. My purpose is to bring people to Christ and to save them. So future writers do exactly what I'm doing and know readers that this is why I'm writing. Everything I write is supposed to point you to Christ. So that's the little overview of chapter six. Really short, but really beautiful. So I wanted to just focus on, right? I just searched it. I want to analyze a verse four. So I have underlined and um, put my P up top there. Then I have my principle up top. And the part that I underlined is all of chapter 4. For the fullness of mine intent is that I may persuade men to come unto the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and be saved. Those fathers we had talked about. So the principle that I pulled out is all that we do should point others to Christ. That's what he did. My, my, the fullness of my intent is persuade people to come into Christ. That's all I want to do is just really point people to come to Christ. And I... um. When I started thinking about Nephi, and that's why he writes, and that's why he um, spends so much time on these plates, I thought, what do I, how do I point people to Christ, right? What do I do? How do I point them? And I thought, if I'm not pointing them to Christ, who am I pointing them to? When I don't point someone to Christ, do I point people to me? Do I point people to somebody else? Do I point people to things values, ideas that are contrary to Christ. Because if if I am, then it, I'm not really on par with where I need to be. And so in fact, I thought of it as a, like a bullseye. Think of like you're shooting a bullseye and, or playing darts. And if that center notch on that bullseye is Christ, everything should hit that. My language should hit that. They should point people to Christ. My dress, my ideas, my um, habits, my what I read, what I listen to, what I watch, everything. Someone should be able to see what I'm doing and think all of that is pointing me to Christ. So when I started thinking about it more like that hitting that bullseye, hitting that target in the center with everything that I do and really driving people to Christ, then... I, too, will be doing exactly what Nephi is doing, right? Pointing others to Christ through my attitude, through my interactions with others, just everything, everything that I do. So I thought of, I started thinking about people who bring others to Christ, okay? It's kind of hard, like, how do you bring, right? How do we look in the scriptures for somebody who's bringing others to Christ? So I thought about missionaries, I thought about the whole, the whole, every possible way I could bring someone to Christ through the scriptures or find an example in the scriptures. And then I remembered an awesome one that is someone physically being brought to Christ. And it's in Mark chapter two, verses two through five. And so I have that reference written out right up here by my principal. This is an amazing story. It tells you how awesome your friend should be, right? Mark two. 2 through 5. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. So there's nobody can get in. There's so many people. This place is packed, like completely, completely packed. And he preached the word unto them, Christ. He is in Capernaum at the time. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was born of four. So there's a man sick of palsy, born, carried by four people. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. So this is the dedication of the friends. They're like, we want to get you to Christ so bad. When we try to get in the door and it's 
like, we can't even get you to the door. Rather than being like, hey, we should probably go home. They say, hey, dude, better idea. Let's go from the top, right? Let's take this roof off and get our friend here. That's how committed we are to get them to Christ. And they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed where in the sick of the palsy lay. So now they get on the roof. They ripped it up. They're letting him down with ropes. And when Jesus saw their faith, and I submit that faith would be his friends and that man. They had, a, they had a role to play in this too, a very, very important role. He said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. And I thought, oh, if he hadn't have had friends who pointed him to Christ, he would have still been sick. He still would have had those sins. He still would have had to deal with that. But because of the friends that he had and because of their ability to point him towards Christ and walk him there and get him there and not give up in their attempts to bring him to Christ, this man is healed and forgiven. And when I start to think about that in the context of 1 Nephi 4, uh, 6, 4, thinking that everything I do should be pointing others to Christ, if I'm not then my eye is not single to the glory of God. My heart is not in the right place. And when my heart and my mind are not into the right place, I won't be able to help bless others who need Christ and who are seeking him but don't know where to find him. So I bear testimony of how important it is to point others to Christ because they're following our example more than we know and maybe more than they communicate to us, but they are. They're looking at our the little things we do in our lives that will point them to Christ. And I know most importantly, when I bring others to Christ, I'm bringing myself to Christ. I'm keeping myself on that straight and narrow that will bring me closer to my Savior. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.